Last night I had a very interesting dream. And uh, if you are a Christian, when I talk about the rapture, you will understand what I'm saying. The rapture is a phenomenon under which we believe as Christians that one day, one of these fine days, all those who believe in God, those who believe in the death, the resurrection, the purchasing and the redemption of the human race through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that one day they will be caught up out of this world and will meet Jesus in the air. And I had a dream last night in which I was alone in the whole wide world and everyone basically had been caught up. Everyone had left. And as much as I did not feel any upheaval, any pain, any you know, uncertainty within me, any fear and any apprehension. The world looked like it was normal, but it was totally different being alone, the feeling of being alone. In the podcast, we're discussing some of the things that happen to a visionary when they are misunderstood by their loved ones and by their friends. So today, let us look at one more aspect in which a visionary suffers when they are pursuing their purpose. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Well, the thing is that we are not called to understand everyone. That's an interesting thing to say because understanding and harmony and being in tune with everyone is one of the biggest things we can do on the face of the earth. And probably, unfortunately, it doesn't come naturally to all of us. We have to tune ourselves to understand one another. We have to navigate our lives through harmony and through being in sync one with another there is a scripture that says there is no people who can walk together two people walking together if they do not agree and agreement is one of the biggest forces on the face of the earth especially when it comes to relationships and i'm not just talking about marital relationships i'm talking about business relationships i'm talking about governmental relationships and and so on agreement is a big deal a big thing the other aspect of life we need to understand is that we are unique as in every one of us is made in a totally unique different ways and the architecture of our uniqueness is geared towards us performing a particular thing of meaning and of purpose in life in other words we were sent on earth on a mission to do stuff to bring things to fruition, to create things, to make an impact, to contribute, to make a difference on the face of the earth. We were told to do that basically by being gifted in particular ways, being made unique in particular ways, is a message to us that we should appear and to should do as much as we have been formed to do and called to do or as much as we've been preset to exist and that means that we love to live in our uniqueness and every time you see someone living in their uniqueness it is easy for us 
because it is easy for us to misunderstand them because there is this thing called starter school every one of us grows up in an environment that is basically governed by a starter school i mean i kid you not every environment is governed by one state at school or another you can talk about language that is state at school you can talk about culture that is state at school you can talk about the economics the social whatever it is those are things that are forming parameters of the state at school all of us are shaped by the environment in which we live in the environment in which we exist and sometimes the big problem is that our uniqueness tends to go outside of the environment the starter school tends to spell something totally different from what the starter school is saying maybe starter school says you must go to school all the way up to degree level that's how you're going to be successful but in your heart you feel like i don't need to go through all that stuff there is something here that i've discovered that i need to put my hands on it and i need to work it out and bring it to fruition but start a school screams and tells you as long as you don't have an education paper as long as you've not passed your exams you are a failure see this misunderstanding going on between the uniqueness of the individuals and the start a school of the day and it's a daily daily fight and let me tell you for many decades start a school has been winning the game winning the game you know mass producing of people and the people who are falling by the wayside are forgotten and I, i told you in the previous episodes some of the different ways in which we treat the visionaries that are basically seeing something totally different from the starter school we isolate them we mistreat them we laugh at them we misunderstand them we you know withdraw support from them and and we create very many obstacles we fight them we affront them at times when you see we feel threatened by their vision a man rose up and said that the earth is not as flat as everyone else is thinking including the christian religion that was the most predominant religion at that particular moment in time which was actually institutionalized and what happened that man was vilified that man was told he is a you know producing heresies and he could be burnt at the stake i think he was thrown into prison something of that nature and what happened to the man he dropped his vision and it was true at the end of the day it has been proven that the earth is not flat it is round people used to think that if you walk up to the end of the earth you can just fall off but that's not necessarily the truth so starter school had so much entrenched itself and believed that and started vilifying a visionary who saw something different and unfortunately that is what we are seeing happening on a daily basis in lives today in families in classrooms in workplaces in the government in all these places on every working day people are being misunderstood and so we've been looking at what goes through what a visionary goes through when such like things normally happen and yesterday we had a discussion about this that at times when start a school fights back at times when maybe you are laughed at you isolated uh, support is withdrawn from you and all those things at times it gets to you and we say that you start doubting what you saw you start doubting what you believed you start doubting what is inside of you can you believe it something that you're so passionate about that is within your system within your spirit nobody else feels your spirit like yourself but the fact that they have refused to accept and to understand that you might be on a different plane you might have heard something differently from the rest of the commonly accepted norm of the day you start doubting yourself you start doubting is it necessarily true and if you are not careful right then and there a vision is aborted right then and there an idea is aborted it is killed i mean it becomes a stillbirth because the idea is not necessarily fitting into the dictates the norms the average normal way of doing things in life that way and so you start doubting yourself 
and you doubt yourself and you doubt yourself and before you know it you are no longer passionate about that idea you're no longer passionate about children you're no longer passionate about the book that you are writing you start writing a book and you go and you tell your people and so on they have never written a book in all their lives and they tell you you know how difficult it is to to write a book you can't do this you can't do that and you start doubting yourself you go and you tell people that you know i want to play the guitar and they tell you and they've never played the guitar by the way they tell you do you know how much it takes to learn how to play the guitar do you know how much your fingers are going to wear out and so on and so forth and you start doubting yourself and you never touch the guitar because someone else who has never done the very thing that you were passionate about that you wanted to do has told you something else and you doubting yourself so we say that the only place where you get credence for the vision that you have is not outside it is within you it is in your heart and it is between you and god it is not between you and fellow human beings at times fellow human beings do not get you they will not get you fellow human beings want to see results they do not want to hear about ideas they do not want to hear about concepts they do not want to hear about these things that you are coming up with that are in conception stage and they fail to understand that creation is normally done twice See when you see a building a microphone a laptop uh, whatever it is you see earphones uh, a mug all those things were designed conceptually first and then they were created physically next and so people do not want to see the first creation they throw away the first creation they i mean talk negative about the first creation and before you can know it that blueprint that you have in your head or maybe even on paper you kill it you want to start a project where in africa kids are learning how to skate and you're having skating competitions here and there and, and they tell you it's never it's never been done it's never going to be possible kids do not want to do this they just want to sit back and you know and you doubt the idea the only valid place where you can go and find credence to the idea to the purpose pursuit is in your heart why is it that it is in your heart and it is not in someone else's heart it is because you are unique you have heard the cry or the calling and you are responding to it you are responding to it with clarity and it's in the conception stage so stick with it and the the most interesting thing about this is that the guy the very guys who doubted you once they have seen the physical the second creation of the thing that you are up to they will tell you see i knew i knew you would do it <laughs> i i knew i knew this thing is is doable you know i just knew <sighs> that is how human beings operate so you as a visionary might feel you want to doubt yourself you want to doubt the vision the advice that we're giving you is don't when you're misunderstood by friends and by loved ones and by every other human being about the vision that you did have the purpose that you're pursuing for the most part which is in the conception stage don't doubt yourself go into your heart you feel it you sense it you feel the vibe you feel the spirit remember how you conceived that idea has it refused to go that is where you find the credence that is where you find the validity of that dream now the second reason the second thing that the visionary normally goes through there could be very many other things that the visionary goes through but i'm going to talk about four maybe five and so the second one that this visionary goes through when they are misunderstood by friends and by loved ones is what they feel alone and they feel abandoned why because at times they are physically abandoned alone and I, i'm thinking i was just thinking this morning when i had that dream about you know people being caught up and 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 so on and you're left alone in the world left alone in the universe it is a feeling like no other it, 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 you don't want to be there and i was thinking how was this adam guy the first guy who was created i mean how did he manage to be alone the only human being on the face of the universe alone how did he do it i mean it's 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 totally 
I know it's unprecedented. Maybe he was the first guy and so on and so forth. But just being alone, being abandoned, lacking support, lacking affirmation, lacking belief, especially from the people that are supposed to be supporting you, and they look at your hustle and they laugh at you and they isolate you and they do not give you support and they do not give you any belief, any affirmation, any respect. You feel alone as a visionary. And it's bad to feel alone and to be alone physically. And you know you can be alone when you're in the crowds of people. I remember there's a time that uh, I was discussing something, a project that was coming up. And I was in a group of about three or four guys that were, I mean, who were ironing out plans on how the meeting is going to go and so on and so forth and, and so on. And so I had this idea because for me, I'm a why guy. I am always going to the drawing board and asking questions about why do we want to do that? Why should we do it? Must we do it? What is the reason behind the doing? I always go back to the drawing board to ask those questions. And I remember very well as I was doing that asking and those inquisitions, everyone laughed at me. I felt so infuriated and so alone. And even as the meeting progressed, nobody noticed but I shut up. As in I stopped speaking, I went into my shell, my idea, creativity, just shut up. I felt alone. I felt different. In a meeting where there was animation and people were talking, I felt like I don't belong here. And at times, that's how a visionary normally feels when you have this idea and the people around you that you expected to support, you expected to do these things together with you, to put an arm around your shoulders and to pat you on your back and to ask you questions and to tell you, tell you I'm, I'm here for you. You know, I got you. I got your back. I'm watching your back. I, I have your support. I believe in you. You can do this. Give it a shot. I mean, as long as those guys are in there, you can be able to do it. But if those people are not there, you feel alone. You feel overwhelmed. And I'm going ahead of myself. So this, this state is all over the world. This state of being alone is ubiquitous. It is all over the world where you can find visionaries where you can find leaders some of them they feel alone some of them they feel abandoned they are different and no wonder we misunderstand these leaders these visionaries you know, they they download this <laughs> crazy ideas and like i said yesterday we have no obligation to believe in these crazy ideas nobody says that we should believe every idea I'm told that Mark Zuckerberg, when he came up with the idea of Facebook, he called some people into his room to discuss about the idea. Few guys went and others did not believe in the idea. I mean, those guys who did not believe in the idea, they had no business believing in the idea. And that's the, the same way with us human beings. We've got no business believing in any idea that comes up. The guy who has the business believing in the idea is the idea generator. The bather, the parent, the one who brings forth the idea. That is the person who is responsible to be believing it. Not every one of us. And so... The visionaries normally come up with these grand ideas and I'm going to, to talk about that maybe in my writing today that people invent things. Everyone can be an inventor. Everyone can basically be an inventor in anything that they are passionate about. And you cannot take it away from them. But you see, we are not like everyone else. We are unique in our own ways. We don't see things the same way everyone else sees things. So you can come up with this idea. To us, it's natural. I mean, it's natural and no big deal. But to the rest of the world, or maybe to the next person, to the person next door, it's weird. Straight out weird. Why? Because you're unique, you're different. You're listening to a different drumbeat in your life, which is how God created you in the first place. So these visionaries, they download these great ideas and it takes, it is I mean, insurmountable in our own estimation. It will take years. I mean, it will take a lot of effort. It will take a lot of money. I mean, nobody has ever done it before. No one is going to believe you. That's the feedback we give them. And now the visionary starts feeling alone, feeling lack of support, feeling abandoned. At that moment, just one person 
I'm telling you, just one person can put a hand on their shoulders and they come along and they say, I'm going to help you. I'm going to support you. That one person, that just one person has saved probably the life of that visionary or the life of that project, the life of that vision, the life of that purpose that this guy was pursuing. So visionaries, they need a lot of this kind of support. Even when we do not understand them, I'm going out of myself. But you as a visionary, this is what you need. But if you don't find any support, just like I told you yesterday, if you don't find any support on the ground, what are you going to do? You're going to go back to where you got the vision from. You're going to go back to your spirit. You're going to go back to your heart. You're going to go back to your God. Where you got that vision from? Have those guys been exterminated? Are they still there? If they are still there, believe. If the heartbeat for that vision is still there, believe. Let me tell you, just believe. You might have no human being, just like Adam had no human being to help him initially. But believe and keep on believing. At times you get one support, one person who just comes to support you. Maybe they don't even believe in you, but they just love you enough to support you. That's all you need to scale the heights. Nothing is crucial to a visionary than being supported. And I know you know what I'm talking about as a visionary. Nothing is critical to you than having someone come alongside to support you. So tomorrow we're going to talk about something else that visionaries normally feel when they are misunderstood by their loved ones. Until then, stay tuned and keep on believing. Bye-bye. A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.